Well, welcome to the Classic Car Channel. Now, I'm just going to do a quick video about a recent new arrival to the fleet. Um, many of you will know that I've uh, had a number of the small side valve Fords over the years, so you won't be surprised to hear that the new arrival is in fact a 410. It's a Prefect from 1948. Um, regulars to the channel and the website will know um, the 1952 Anglia that's already here, so that needs a little introduction. Same with the E83W van that I talked about a month or two back in a previous video. But this is a Ford Prefect from 1948. It's not been on the road for many, many years, so let's go and have a quick look and just see what it is that I ended up buying not so long ago. Okay, well here it is parked over here. So, like I say, this is a Prefect 1948. Um, this is a Prefect E93A. This has the 1172cc engine, whereas the Anglia over there, that has the 933, the 8 engine. And this is the 10, same engine as the Pop 103E and the E83W van and many others. The this era of Prefect came along, I think, in 1938 and was produced for two or three years, then stopped for the war, then re-entered production in 1945 and continued for a short while after that. The revisions made to it in 1952 included different shaped front wings that sort of came up higher, dropped down, and the headlights were set into the wings, whereas the E93A Prefect, like this one, the headlamps are still separate on top of the wings, and I think that actually looks a little bit nicer. Do you agree? The earlier prefects, the earlier E93 has also had painted grills, but in around, I think, about 1947 or thereabouts, they went to this sort of chrome-plated Mazak-type grill. And again, I think that actually looks a little bit nicer. It just gives a much-needed injection of bright work to the front, because otherwise they can look a little bit sombre if this is all body colour as well. So I think that just looks bob-on, and the grill is actually in really nice condition. Now... As far as I know, this hasn't been on the road since the late 1960s, beginning of the 1970s. I mean, as I talked about in a video earlier in the year, the idea, because obviously there are a few different vehicles dotted around, the idea is to try and simplify and streamline things a little bit this year, so part of that is to get rid of some of the projects that I'm not going to get around to any time soon, so the comma will go um, at some point, probably next year now. And, yeah, like I say, the idea is just to try and make life a little bit easier. So it's not so much about reducing numbers, although that is part of it, but it, I'd like to try and, of the cars that I do have, try and sort of introduce a bit more commonality of the parts and also being able to work on them. So this is very similar mechanically to the Anglia over there. And again, with the little Ford van, the little green van. The problems you get is if every car is different, you have to learn about each different car, you have to find spares, store spares, etc. And it just gets a little bit complicated. That's where the Volvo kind of doesn't really fit in with that plan of simplifying and standardising across the fleet. So we might have to have a think about that one. But this, this is a sweet little car. And because I've been around side valve Fords for quite a long time, I can just sort of dive in and just get on with it rather than having to relearn everything and sort of get a handle on the, the technology and the finding parts and so on because I've kind of been there already with previous Fords, the Anglia, little vans and so on over the years. So I'm hoping this shouldn't be too much of a nightmare to return to the road. What are you doing? The only sad thing with this particular car is because it came off the road nearly the 1970s and it just kind of got pushed into a corner and left that registration its original registration is no longer current on DVLA and there's no original paperwork with it that confirms, i.e. an old logbook that confirms that that chassis number on this car belongs to that registration number um, and there doesn't seem to be much chance stop drinking that there doesn't seem to be much chance of uh, being able to keep that number on the car which is such a shame so I'll probably have to go down the re-registration route via the Ford Club get them to do a dating certificate come and inspect it just to make sure the vehicle is actually real and exists and then do that, which is sort of, it's just a compromise I'll have to make because unless an old logbook or some other document turns up with the chassis number and that registration confirming the link, it's pretty much stuffed in terms of keeping that number on it. So let's have a quick look under the bonnet. No bonnet locks on cars of this age. You just rotate this thing and up she goes. There we go. So where's the Anglia? has a centrally hinged bonnet, it's a bit like the Ford Pop, well, identical to the Ford Pop, this has a rear hinged bonnet, 
we can have a quick peek under here and just see what the current state of play is like i say it does actually run i mean the fuel smells very very old i have added some fresh but the fre the fuel will need draining but we've got a, a new battery under here if we have a peek down here you can see the starter has been off that's all nice and clean it looks like it's got a new starter cable as well so that's all good some of the hoses that one looks fairly old but this one looks new it's got a new hose on there it appears that the dynamo has been apart <coughs> we've got cleaned up connections on the back there new bolt in there so that looks like it may have been attended to if we and you can also see down here there's a bit of red gloop where the head gasket would be so i'm guessing maybe maybe it's had a valve job at some point perhaps or at least a decoke head skim perhaps and i'm hoping that it's not just gloop and there is actually a new gasket in there there's also new head studs and nuts new plugs new ignition parts new coil so a quick look round here. Yeah, this looks like it's been off. There's a bit more evidence of red gloop, which I think I'll probably whiz that off and put a proper gasket in there. We'll clean the carburetor out, obviously. Got some new pipe work going into the fuel pump down here. And the fuel pump looks fairly clean. That works. The priming lever works. I've just tried that to start it up this morning. So someone has made a start on getting this to become a good starting car. I'll probably check the ignition timing. That's all done around here. Obviously, got the original chassis plate there and the chassis number, the matching chassis number is stamped. If you ever need to know where the chassis number is on an upright side valve Ford, Pop, Anglia van, whatever, um, it's down there. Stamped down here. It can be a bit difficult to read sometimes. So sometimes you have to scrape the paint off and all the old gloop. But fortunately, that number there matches the one on there. So at least that confirms the identity of the car. But it doesn't mean that the nice old number can stay on it, which is a bit of a shame. But you can't have everything. But yeah, it's pretty solid around here. It's like a bit of a toolbox in here. Someone's painted this silver. The car is black but someone has painted the bulkhead silver which makes me wonder if the person who originally had it when it was new possibly was involved with commercial vehicles you, know, you often see commercial vehicles where the underbonnet and the engine everything is painted silver probably because it shows up any leaks that much easier and it's also a bit brighter to work on under there so I'm guessing that's why someone has painted this silver um, but obviously a long time ago Yeah, this is a bog standard, 10 horsepower, RAC rating, not brake horsepower, but the 10 horse 1172 side valve engine, all totally stock, totally standard, and uh, at least these are fairly easy to find parts for compared to some cars. I mean, this is very much a pre-war car, it just happened to be made in 1948, but these came out in 38. And not a great deal changed, the pre-war cars had more bulbous headlamp lenses, and they also ran on 17 inch diameter wheels, post-war prefects. Uh, this one are on 16s. Now, the wheels have been given a lick of paint, but they look a bit a bit shouty. And the tyres aren't great either. But I do have a good set of 17-inch wheels and tyres off an Anglia or something like that. So I'll probably put those on because it will also raise the gearing as well as improve the tyres that are on the car. So that seems like a, a pretty sensible thing to do. And like I say, the pre-war prefects were on 17s anyway. So I don't see any harm in doing the same with this one. It's only a bolt-on thing. It's easy enough to bolt the 16s back on for originality. But in terms of making a car usable and looking virtually identical to these, I can't see any harm in putting the 17s on. At least give it a try anyway. These indicators up here are a very common mod from the 1950s. People would replace the pop-up semaphore indicators, which the car came with as standard, which are in here. And they would put these little sort of Mickey Mouse ears on the roof. They're quite, quite appealing, so I think we'll probably just get those working again. Um, pop-ups are great, but these are a very period mod, so they can stay. And they're original to the car, so that's all good. What are you looking at? Of course, in the 1950s, it became a requirement. You couldn't just have one single stop tail light, which is this down here. So, as with most cars from back then, it's had an upgrade to twin rear stop and tail lights. Oddly, they don't match. They're both Ford items. 
as you can see that's got Enfo written on it this is plastic so Enfo English Ford so that's a proper lamp and over here we've got a different one entirely which is also Enfo um, now what do you do do you find another one of these because this is nicer you find another one of these to go on the other side or do you keep it odd lights one on either side I think I'm inclined because the car is fairly quirky anyway I think I will just leave it exactly as it is and as it has always been because why not there's also this nice little Ford badge was this a standard fit I don't know I've not seen another one of these but I haven't studied prefects in enough detail to know for sure so if you can let me know maybe in the comments is that just something that someone stuck on back in the dim and distant past or is that a standard fitment obviously that one is but what about this one there's nothing much of excitement in the bootlid area but you can see that the inner wings this is where the wings bolt through and they rot it all looks fairly solid that side same with over there I just want a bit of a clean up and wipe over the oily rag this hatch here is where the spare wheel goes so that comes out and the spare wheel goes in there and that all looks fairly solid the rear volance is good because again it hasn't actually been sat outside which is, certainly helps these things survive running boards quite solid you can jump up and down on those if you're so inclined uh, let's have a quick pop this bonnet back down again we can have a quick look inside and just see what the state of the interior is like before I do that let's have a quick look again in the Anglia which is over here at its Bakelite dashboard because the Anglia which is similar age to the Prefect has a Bakelite dash but just a single dial in the middle as you can see there now let's go and compare that to the Bakelite dash in the Prefect okay so let's clamber inside the Prefect all the doors, by the way all the doors shut really nicely I've oiled them all up and they just just push shut like that let's try this rear one door pillars are good because they can tend to rot out down here there's a little bit on the front door pillar but nothing major but that, just you just put it to Let's give it a gentle and it just clicks shut there's a little bit of bubbling here but nothing nothing untoward a little bit at the bottom there as well there's been older repair but again it's all solid now let's have a look at the dashboard and just do the comparison so again it's Bakelite so it being the Prefect which was a bit posher this was a little bit more at market than the Anglia and of course the the pop was the bottom of the tree completely so you've got you've even got a clock in the prefect so this is all mod cons there's the lever or the thing for the opening screen which works but i won't force it because it hasn't been oiled yet that's the wipers choke obviously with the uh, essential peg starter also i don't remember um we've got an ammeter and of course a fuel gauge which doesn't work correctly it just reads full all the time so there's something to do there what's particularly nice well I like anyway there's an old transfer there for the supplying dealer so it's Bell's Garage of Blackheath, Hales Owen and Kidderminster so that gives that gives a bit of a clue as to where it may have been in its during its life there's a few odds and ends over here but nothing nothing too exciting old tax disc holder but no tax discs that I've found yet unless, I, unless there's something hidden away that I haven't yet discovered because I've not really been through it all properly yet no carpets they were they're in a bag at the back but they're all damp and horrible so they've been taken out and for a for a regular any weather user to be honest you don't really need carpets just some rubber mats that you can whip in and out as and when you need to is probably a better bet the steering wheel's got a few little cracks on it but that doesn't matter because it's it's got a steel frame behind it the, uh, the Bakelite covering is just pretty much cosmetic really dashboard's actually quite nice 
door trims have survived quite well. There's a little bit of damage down there, but for, for the age of the car, it doesn't really matter. These have survived really nicely. Like I say, the guy I bought it off, who had it a few months, he was very keen on preservation as well, rather than restoration. So there was a split on the driver's seat here. So rather than just getting a new bit in, he actually removed a piece from underneath the seat down here where you can't see and let that into there. So you'd, you'd really have to look. So that's just sort of done a nice job with that. The passenger seat's pretty good. And the rear seat's good as well. Just a few signs of age. The headlining's looking a bit yucky, but it is still there. But to be honest, I'm not too worried about that. Yeah, there's the remains of the original carpets in that bag, but I don't think they'll be going back into service again. But after all this time, I don't think it's too essential that we keep those. The door, the door panels are nice. That's that's the important thing. As are the, the baker lights around here, because these easily crack. And they're not that easy to replace. But fortunately, all these ones seem to be pretty good. So, in, certainly in terms of the interior, it just wants a good clean, a bit of TLC, but no great shakes, fortunately. Let's just have a quick look around the other side. Yep, step area is good. And the door pillar is good. So the, the things always rot at the bottom where the water runs down, but fortunately it's not been sat outside. There we go. Still the remains of the old pinstriping just about in evidence on the side in places, right there. A little bit there. And just the tiniest little bit of tin worm at the bottom here, which will probably be attended to at some point. But these often go where these bolts go through for the door hinges. But this is actually pretty good for its age. Windy up windows, keep fit windows, of course. Perfect. Anyway, that's just a quick walk around intro to the 1948 Ford Prefect E93A. I hope that's of interest. Like I say, someone's made a start on work under the bonnet, and it does actually start. I'll try firing it up in a minute. Um, the exhaust is blowing at the front, so I certainly need to do that. The fuel smells terrible, so that'll want draining out. The brakes are mechanical on these. They seem to work, but obviously they want greasing up and adjusting, checking. Same for the kingpins and all the joints at the front. It seems quite sound underneath. The chassis looks good, but I'll have a proper poke around once it's jacked up and up in the air. And then really it's going round, you know, going round the lights, checking the wipers, all that kind of thing. Standard sort of recommissioning stuff, but at least on this unlike the Morris 8 that I had this is mechanical brakes so kind of if they worked 50 years ago as long as they were greased up they'll still pretty much work now um, whereas hydraulic brakes are just a pain in the neck on old cars so they've been sat and I just don't like them at all but yeah I just think this is a really appealing little car I'd be certainly interested to read your comments on this little prefect and tell me what you think of it I mean, old, these little old sidewall Fords are pretty slow and they're not for everyone, but I think they're a very characterful little car. As Junior's had a little drive of it up and down the drive, and he approves, so that's a, that's a good thing. And being four-door, as opposed to the Anglia's two-door, it just makes it out a little bit more practical as well. well. I suppose you should see if it'll actually start up. It did start before, but there are no guarantees. So shouldn't need too much in the way of choke, I'll just put a little bit on there using the Mark 1 clothes peg to keep the choke out of course note the sound like a little gear extension screw down the end of here because normally the gear knob would be on there but this is like a little cranked extension to start you turn the ignition on but as with all of these Fords it doesn't go clockwise it goes anti-clockwise and there's the fuel gauge registering full incorrectly I mean it's showing a bit of discharge that's okay I don't know if the clock works or not I've not had the battery connected long enough so let's see if we pull on the starter see if it'll behave Needs a little bit of choke I think 
It's very springy, this choke cable. It's actually a very quiet sounding engine. It's not easy to do this single handed. There we go, just a little bit of choke because the engine's stone cold. Let's have a quick peek under the bonnet again. So yeah, it's clearly blowing down on this joint down here. It doesn't look like it's been apart for a very long time. And the fuel, like I said before, the fuel smells terribly old. So I'm amazed it runs at all, to be honest. But that won't take much work to fix. But mechanically, she sounds very sweet indeed. So I'm hoping just a basic service, check the timing, clean up the carburetor a bit, that should probably suffice for under here. Um, obviously I've not seen it warm, so things can always change when the oil thins out a bit and it gets up to temperature, but the early signs are that mechanically she's pretty healthy. So uh, let's just see if it'll uh, move backwards and forwards a bit just to demonstrate that. Yeah, the clutch actually feels really good, just moving it backwards and forwards there. There's no juddering or shaking, and it's the, you know, the biting point feels pretty healthy. So, again, hopefully just a service. We'll see the mechanical side of things looking fairly shipshape. I can just concentrate on tidying it up a little bit cosmetically without going too berserk, cleaning up the interior and just getting it reliable. Like I say, some of the electrics work, some don't. The wipers don't work, they're vacuum, but I have noticed... When you switch off the engine, you hear a hissing, like a sigh, under the bonnet, which suggests to me that there's a leak on the vacuum pipe, somewhere between the inlet manifold and the wiper motor behind the dash. I think there's probably a leak somewhere. So with that done, it'll probably bring the wipers back to life as well. So anyway, that's just a quick intro to the just post-war Ford Prefect. I hope that was of interest. The idea is to progress this over the winter because it's, uh, it fits in the garage so I can get on with it regardless of the weather, unlike the comma and things like that. Um, and it's just a bit smaller and, like I say, because it shares the same mechanics and the spares as the Anglia and the little van, it's easier to work on this because I kind of know my way around these already so it saves a load of time and I haven't got a huge amount of time to be playing with these things at the moment. So that's the, that's the plan for this over the next few months, get this running, get it registered, which is probably the fiddliest bit of all to be honest. Um, and then we'll just see how we go from there. So please keep watching, please keep an eye on the channel for future updates on the Prefect and everything else, Volvo, Anglia, little dodge big dodge and so on and uh, more news hopefully very very soon so thanks for watching bye for now more videos along very very soon
Lovely old snail brand spanner. Thanks for watching.